On today's show, we're taking you step by step through Squamish's new organic program. Welcome to Go See the Sky, only on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Vanessa Ibera, joined today by Dora Gunn, Sustainability Coordinator for District of Squamish. And today we're talking all about the new organics collection program that was rolled out here in town in early May. So as part of that, we'll be telling you all about how to use the kitchen catchers that you received uh, last month, also materials that can be uh, composted as part of the program. But first of all, just that, Dora, let's talk about the program, why the need to roll this out uh, last month. Sure. So in the in the big picture, what we're trying to do is close the loop on waste. So rather than uh, producing products, uh, using them and then having them go to the landfill, uh, what we're trying to do is have people produce products, use them and then recycle them or reuse them into a new product that can be used again. So organic collection is an example of that. You can turn it into compost and then use it again in your garden. <clears throat> We also have a problem in Squamish where our landfill is getting quite full and it's expected to reach capacity in about 2018. So we're trying to figure out ways of uh, reducing the amount of waste that's going to the landfill so that it'll hopefully extend the life of the landfill a little bit and then also be uh, cheaper in the long run because we're going to have to do something after 2018. Yeah, and talk mm -hmm. about that, the stat, I know uh, over 55% of materials found in is it our landfill can be composted. Have you seen that kind of go up every year, the stat of maybe just people not quite getting it? So we only have done the one waste audit, that was in 2012, and when we looked at people's residential garbage, so that's not commercial or anything else, but just residential, we found that 56% of that was organic. So it seemed like a good place to, to continue our waste diversion. We're already recycling, um, but now we're going to start dealing with our organics. Yeah, and why the need for that, you know, apprehension, confusion? Why do you think some people just aren't quite getting it yet and are kind of on the composting fence? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a new program. When recycling came out, people were on the recycling fence as well. Um, it takes a bit of getting used to, there's new ways of doing things, people are worried about the smell, um, they might be worried about getting maggots, they're worried about bears, um, yeah, so we're gonna, there's ways to deal with all of those problems. Yeah, the smell seems to be the biggest deterrent we're going to talk about later on in the show, uh, but just that you rolled it out a few weeks ago, I know um, you've gone through this a few weeks now, what are some things you found as part of that confusion that some homeowners aren't getting, what are some examples you've seen? <laughs> One of the funnier ones I've seen, but everybody's learning, including myself, so, um, is that we've seen a few people put their kitchen catchers out on the street. Oh, and the kitchen catcher, there. yeah, they're halfway there, but they're trying, that's fantastic. The kitchen catcher is for use in your home, and then the tote, uh, the large tote goes out on the street. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so we're slowly getting there at least. We're getting there. <laughs> okay, so we'll talk about more ways you can get further there and fully compost here in Squamish later on in the show. But throwing to our first story of the day here on Go See the Sky, it was Christmas in May in downtown Squamish a few weeks ago where crews were filming the latest movie here in town. And with many more set to be filmed, the advantage for locals goes beyond putting the city on the screen. Like any pastor beginning to write his sermon, it's important to find a space to be alone with your thoughts. For Glenn Davies, he has no choice. My office and books and shelves and everything's been cleared out. Um, all I have here is my, my laptop to work on my sermon. That's because for the past week, Vancouver film crews have been using his office, along with other downtown locations, to film the latest Hallmark movie starring Alison Sweeney. On the first day, which was two days ago, they used the windows here in my office as a sound booth for a radio station. It's a cool thing. Hallmark Films does a good job. They've been amazing. With this church's Ledge Cafe, located directly below Glenn's office, having sat empty since December due to other commitments, crews were quick to jump on the space as well, converting the downtown storefront into a cozy, festive bakery in the span of 24 hours. This one is Murder, She Baked, a Plum Pudding Murder Mystery. So it's a Christmas movie. Set deck, art department, they supplied trees and presents, garland, decorations, Christmas lights. What, you know, when you think Christmas, we had it. Part of the reason that we chose this was the interior look of it and how spacious it is. It was perfect in that it had all of the equipment that we need as far as like an espresso machine and a counter. Having buildings of this size uh, in, in this kind of an environment is very rare. With 20 productions having been made in Squamish this year alone, seeing film equipment and odd props lining the sidewalks has become a normal sight for store owners, with the occasional set noise and crowd a small price to pay. 
With hundreds of movies having been shot here in town, Squamish has never been more on the map. With Glenn, one of many business owners lending their shop for film crews, the benefits of shutting down go beyond financial. To stimulate the, the building owners in terms of the investment in their own buildings, you kind of need to uh, trigger their imagination. And certainly the film industry coming down here and putting a mural on this building or a facade on this building just sparks people's imagination and then they can visualize it better and go, oh, it doesn't take much to actually, you know, take it up a notch. For Glenn, walking downstairs to see his once empty cafe, now stocked with beautiful treats, displays and holiday cheer, motivates this businessman to reopen even more. This used to be our pegboard where we would have our menu for the Ledge Cafe and they've replaced it with a chalkboard. My daughter-in-law, she was just here and I showed her, I said, look, they did this and they did that. And some of the things, for example, the coat hook thing, right? We always talk about where are we going to put people's coats in the winter besides over their chairs. And so yeah, it, it's neat to see someone else come in and even if it's a set decoration, they have ideas. With those ideas, sometimes remaining permanent. Occasionally, if we decided that, oh, well, this color scheme won't work, we're going to have to paint the walls this color. Well, when we've painted them, then we sometimes give the, uh, the, the business the option. We say, well, we can paint it back to its original color, or what do you think of this, this color? And sometimes they go, this is better. With plans to hopefully have the Ledge Cafe back up and running this summer, for Glenn, having crews turn his space upside down may have been just what this pastor needed to start again, with that inspiration for a new beginning right under his feet. It's been painful being closed up in my office when it's quiet all day. It's been great to have this crew in here. We posted on Facebook, this is what's happening at the ledge. We've had most of our previous customers coming down and saying, so when this is done, you are going to reopen, right? It's been encouraging. Hallmark's second movie, Murder, She Baked, is set to air this Christmas. If you want to see some awesome photos of crews shooting the movie downtown, be sure to swing by our Twitter uh, site at Go See the Sky. Okay, Dora, let's talk about the actual program at hand. Um, I know most residents receive the kitchen catchers here early May, as we mentioned, but how exactly does a program work? Hmm. So people can collect their kitchen, their food scraps in their kitchen and then put them into their kitchen catcher. They can either line their kitchen catcher with paper bags or they can use newspaper. Okay. And then once their kitchen catcher is full, they take it out and put it in their organics tote and make sure they lock it again afterwards. Uh, and then the collection happens every second week and they put their totes curbside at 7.45 in the morning and unlock them so the trucks can collect them. Okay, and let's talk about something kind of funny I saw on Facebook last night. Residents were kind of debating on, you know, whether bears can get into these bins just as much as garbage bins or how do we kind of protect these? Uh, how do you kind of talk more about that? So in Squamish, all our totes have bear locks and these new organics totes actually have improved bear locks on them. They have a metal size that go right the way around uh, that eliminates the point on the older totes where the bears might be able to get their claws under. Okay, so there's no way. <laughs> That's right. You we never know, know, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, at least it protects even more. So let's talk about those goods that bears might want to get a hold of. Um, we've got a little illustration here, but kind of talk us through what items are compostable in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. So your usual uh, veggie scraps and, and uh, fruit scraps can go in. Tea bags, uh, coffee grinds can also go in. Uh, Eggshells, um, pits, including even avocado pits, okay. and also meat and bones. So I have some old um, leftover chicken wings that stayed too long in my fridge, and that can go in as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to freeze those before you put them in, though. You can just store them in your freezer until collection day and then put them out on collection day. Right, we were saying that's because that's one of the worst parts of a compost bin. The smell, obviously, meat would be one of the worst. So is that what people should do with all their meat? Just freeze it until maybe the day before uh, collections is coming? So if they have space in their freezer, that's a great option. Some people don't have space, and so then you just want to make sure you're really layering with yard waste if you don't have space. Okay, and we'll show you those tips later on as well. Um, one thing I thought of, though, I'm looking here and seeing almost a full meal except for the pasta. Uh, is pasta compostable? Yep, pasta okay. compostable as well, yep. <laughs> Anything else? Yep, bread, yep. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Right down to also, yeah, paper towels, uh, skewers you can have. It's crazy, my goodness. Now let's talk about the flip side though. This is where the confusion comes in, what you can't compost. Mm -hmm. Kind of talk us through this other side we have here. Sure, so one of the most important ones to remember is no plastic. Um, that includes compostable or biodegradable plastic. So even if you're at the store and you see something that says compostable, it's not allowed in the Squamish program. Okay. Um, other things you might not think of uh, on fruit, there's stickers. You want to pull those stickers off. Obviously, we won't put the whole banana in there, but you want to pull the sticker off. Um, so any fruit's good ex unless it has a sticker. Just pull the sticker off. Pull the sticker yeah, off, yeah. That's right. And then sometimes vegetables have elastic bands. Make sure you take those off. 
um, or twist ties, same thing. And then, you know, you might think that kind of looks like it could be compostable, but uh, dental floss and cotton balls, that kind of thing, no. And baby wipes, not that either. Um, pet waste, uh, diapers, not okay either. Not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. And of course, if you wanna know what items you can compost or not, you can always visit uh, squamish.ca forward slash organics, or also visit the Carney's website on the bottom of your screen there. Okay, well, throwing to our next story of the day here on Go See the Sky with its many trails and parks, Grouse Mountain remains a hub for BC visitors. But as we find out in this next story, there's a different set of tourists also known to frequent the spot. Let's take a look. Tourist Company are a group of friends who play music together a lot, and we love it. Hey! Just up the road from where a lot of the band lives, we met the Tourist Company on Grouse Mountain, where they performed a song off their latest EP. Since forming in 2013, they've released an album and two EPs, and they're not slowing down at all, with a new record in the works. Three of you are living on the North Shore right now. You're all from all over the place though and you're called the tourist company. Sort of how did you unite from different corners of the earth to this spot? Uh, we all actually met working up at a summer camp um, up on the Sunshine Coast called Keats Camps. Uh, and that's kind of the, the magnet that drew us all together was, was that camp. Um, and so otherwise, I don't know how our paths would have crossed from very different backgrounds. Like I grew up mostly in Ontario and then I'm from White Rock. Uh, and Jill was born in South Africa, Brennan's from Tucson, Arizona, and Josue spent most of his time growing up in Mexico and in Portland. Um, so pretty, pretty eclectic. We took flight, but we want more. This world has lost its charm. We need a change of scene. Start this race, begin it now. Fate lies beyond the clouds. We're never turning. been to your live shows before a couple of times, you got a lot of folks singing along, dancing, but I've also heard you say your music isn't super dancey. How do you make that work so well? <laughs> I don't understand how people <laughs> dance along to a lot of our music. I can't dance to it, hence why my moves on stage are very uh, interesting. Underneath the kind of weirdness of a lot of our songs, um, there's we intentionally try to write on something that's kind of hooky and something that people can grab onto. So the more free-spirited folk who usually stand on the front have something to kind of dance and move to and we try our best to give off as much energy as we can because if they give it back then we feed off of that and it's kind of this awesome cycle of give and take and um, people tend to really get into it. You can catch the tourist company at the Schools Out 2015 concert taking place June 19th. To learn more about that event, visit touristcompany.ca. Well, don't go anywhere here and go see the sky. When we return, Kathy is going to show us a unique method for keeping the ick factor out of your kitchen catcher. Also after the break... I got phone calls immediately from all my three daughters and the definite vote was rebuild it. The unique story behind one special girl's playhouse. Welcome back to Go See the Sky. We're here today on the program talking all about Squamish's organic composting program that officially rolled out last month, early May or so. Uh, we've talked about what materials you can and can't put into the kitchen catchers you likely received, again, as part of that program last month. But joining me right now is Kathy with the Climate Action Network here in Squamish. And you guys have helped uh, as part of the district roll out this program, I know. So before we get into ways to kind of keep the smell and the grime factor out of your uh, bins here, Let's just talk about just that composting when it comes to grime and everything. Uh, is it true it really shouldn't smell if you're doing it correctly, right? Yes, trying to keep things out like the meat and fish and poultry, the things that you would normally keep in the fridge uh, before pickup day. Those things, if you keep them out of here, it helps. It should be fine, yeah. You've even got little holes here on the on the kitchen catchers, which helps with the smell. And right now, too, if you want to even have a compost in your backyard, same thing. If you're putting the correct things in, it, it shouldn't smell, right? It's kind no. of... 
Is that kind of what you think is holding people back sometimes from doing composting or, you know, helping collect things, just thinking it's going to smell? The smell and the yuck factor, because even if it doesn't smell, it can get kind of slimy if you don't have a liner. Right, it can, yeah, there are realities to it. So let's talk about some different methods you have. You've kind of made up this cool um, newspaper bin that people can use if they want to put it inside their kitchen catcher um, to soak up some of those juices. Can you show us exactly how you kind of make those bins? Well, you can either just take pieces of newspaper and put them in here and then roll it up sort of burrito style and put that in. Or if you have the time or you have children who want to do it, then you can you can do an origami type bin liner and you just fold your paper, newspaper, and put it across. Awesome. There are lots of directions online for how to do this on just Google origami bin liner. And then you can just open this up and put it in there. Let's just kind of show our viewers that so it just goes. No, it just goes in there. So once it's in and you fill it with your organics and when it's filled, you take it out and you can just hold the flap over and put it inside your uh, green bin outside. Yeah, two types of Keeps recycling in one. cleaner bin. For sure. And also people, uh, you also received obviously one little paper bin as part of the program in May. But if you'd like to pick up more, you can also pick up at different retailers around Squamish the bag to earth uh, little bins to keep all the mess out. And of course, there's always going to be mess. So like we said afterwards, when you take the bag out, um, Kathy, what are some different ways to kind of just that clean the kitchen catcher maybe after a few weeks or so? Well, if it, you get things inside, it gets a bit slimy. You can put it in the dishwasher, just fold the lid back put it in the dishwasher. You could use soap and water and just clean it by hand uh, using some sort of a biodegradable detergent. And if it gets a bit smelly, you could always use vinegar or even put a little bit of baking soda in. Okay. But it's fairly easy to clean. It is. Makes it that much easier for people to use. Mm -hmm. So, And when we come back, we'll talk about other ways you can clean uh, the other part of the portion, the large green bin that you also received as part of the program. But let's go to our third story of the day here on the show. We're heading all the way to my hometown of Cloverdale, where one grandfather is passing on years of memories to the next generation in what's truly a labor of love. Give to have Rob. Dad likes rock. For two and a half year old Ava, nothing beats playing house with her grandparents. Oh, that's nice. How about a flower? How about a flower? She's a very energetic young girl. What she likes to do is collect rocks and flowers and stores them inside the little mini kitchen inside the playhouse. Loves to run, loves to have fun, loves to be chased, and just loves the playhouse. She calls it her playhouse. This girl's playhouse, one that like most great structures, comes with a little story behind it. Two years after we were married, and we had no children at the time, I was looking through a magazine one day, and I discovered an ad for Century 21. And what made it unique was this incredible child's playhouse that was two stories tall, and then done in Victorian style. It just caught my eye. After calling the home's builder in the States to get a copy of the blueprints, the then young couple held on to them for the next five years, waiting to see what kind of plans life had for them. We just hoped for girls, and we got three. And with that, true to his word, the young father built the exact same pink playhouse for his three daughters, one of them being me. While I was only two when it was built, I can still remember those early years spending hours playing house or simply hanging out enjoying the lazy days of summer with my sisters, with word of the life-size dollhouse quickly getting around our neighborhood. Kids, they flocked here to have a great time all day long and brought their imagination as well. Looking up at the playhouse and seeing lots of little kids, lots of cousins on the little balcony all laughing and having fun. It was just part of our life. With those years of memories also beginning to take its toll. After over 12 years of my sisters and myself playing dress up, hide and go seek and every other game under the sun in this house, like us, it too began to age. With my parents officially empty nesters as of this year, deciding whether to knock it down or rebuild it turned out to be an easy choice. I got phone calls immediately from all my three daughters and the definite vote was rebuild it. Having become a grandfather a few years back with other little feet potentially arriving in the next few years, for my dad, the motivation to rebuild the playhouse was that much stronger, spending the next month taking it down piece by piece. It was really cute because we had a couple of neighbors. When they saw Carl taking it down, they thought that was the end of it. And they seemed concerned that this is it, the playhouse is going to be gone, it's part of the neighborhood. 
Alas, the backyard beauty began to reappear after discovering only a small portion of the original home's materials was actually rotten. Almost three quarters of it was used as part of the rebuild, making this structure that much stronger and special. It's not just the recycling part, it's also the memories as well, because you're taking those memories and putting them back into a new structure. This particular beam was in the original 25-year-old home. So what we did was when we took the whole place apart, we made sure it went back in. It has the names of all three of the girls and the date that it was built. However, not everything remained the same. Along with my dad building a brand new porch, the home also got a bright makeover, with inspiration for that fresh start never far behind. This particular color of yellow is a heritage color, so we decided to use that just to have something different. So same structure, new color, and a new life. While that structure may now belong to this special little girl, for my mom and dad, it's over 25 years of love and laughter will forever be seeped in these walls. Memories that, thanks to this grandfather, are never far away. Each time we look up at the playhouse, we can see in our minds our three daughters playing with their friends and very, very precious memories. And a couple of baby rocks in. Now it's the second generation and now we get to relive all the years we had with the three girls to keep it going. It's just a very special part of our life. Not gonna lie, a little weird to interview your parents, but definitely a special shoot for my memory. So if you have any uh, cool pictures of your forts, also playhouses you have along the Sea to Sky corridor, we'd love to see them. Again, reach out to us on our Twitter site at Go Sea to Sky. All right, Dora, we're here outside your home. Uh, talk about the other equation when it comes to the organic uh, collection program, the bins here. Uh, let's talk about, though, if you're doing yard work and everything, we've got the little spare grass here you may have after doing chores. How does that play into kind of the program? How does that help? Mm -hmm. So you can use your tote for yard waste entirely, or uh, if you're having food scraps as well, you can layer your yard waste and your food scraps. And layering helps to cut down on the smell, um, helps to reduce maggots because it stops the flies from being able to land on the food scraps. Um, and it also reduces the yuck factor too. Yeah, um, how big of a problem is that? You know, we've talked about reducing the ick factor and keeping things clean, but we're outside, you know, it is food. How likely are you just that? Maybe to get maggots or? Yeah, I think it's possible that people might get maggots. Um, the trick you want to do is try and stop the flies from landing and laying their eggs on the food in the first place. So making sure when it's inside, hopefully you don't have flies in your house, but making sure your kitchen catch is tightly closed. Um, you can wrap your food scraps, that stops the flies from landing. Um, and then layering with uh, yard waste out here in the yard uh, helps a lot as well. So not having the flies get in there in the first place. And then if you do get maggots, they can be killed with vinegar and salt, vinegar or salt, I should say, or boiling water. Okay. So, yeah. Neighbors are going to wonder what the heck you're doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boiling water over your bin. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about that's awesome. The last part of the equation, where the actual uh, goods go to. Kind of neat for homeowners to know. It might be more incentive. Uh, well, yeah, where do the organic goods go to in the Sea to Sky Corridor? So we're really lucky to have a composting facility here in the Sea to Sky Corridor. It's called Sea to Sky Soils, and they're located up in Pemberton. Mm -hmm. Wow, and how does that work? So it's put into soil, does that come back to be sold in Squamish? We hope that the Squamish product will be sold in Squamish. Uh, we've only just started producing it, so we haven't got it for sale here yet, um, but yes. Look for more information in the, and it will be sold here in Squamish. Yeah, and do you think people maybe don't realize that just that their goods from the refrigerator, that's the best thing you can put into the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Like why is that that just plants really react to that kind of nutrients? Yeah, so compost uh, provides valuable nutrients for, for plants. It also helps retain water once you've put it into your soil. Um, and uh, it helps the soil structure. So if you have a sandy soil, it helps to bind the soil together. Or if you have a clay soil, it helps to provide more air in that soil. Okay, the more mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to our last story of the day here on the show. The bakery in our next story likely doesn't have too many leftover scraps. Let's head on over to Saman Bakery in West Vancouver, whose special Persian cuisine is getting better every year. Their light treat often found in cafes. Our coconut macaroons are actually one of the most popular uh, products. It's fluffy and it's not too sweet and it has a pure taste of coconut. And while these savory confections may have originated in France, turns out they're also quite popular in Amin's home country of Iran. They've been in Iran as well for at least 10 to 20 years. They have a lot more sugar. They may have some baking powder or um, other additives to make them maybe last longer. 
Having grown up in the Middle East, traditional macaroons were just one of the many things this businessman missed after moving to the West Coast in his late teens. We wanted to have Persian food and Persian bread, and we were not able to buy good enough bread in the market, so we were trying a few other types of breads, and they were machine made, and they didn't taste very good or smell very good. And so he started his own shop, otherwise known as Simon Bakery, in 2005, his company selling just bread the first few years to test out the Persian market on the North Shore. We started with some of the local uh, community uh, supermarkets or grocery stores. Traditionally, you could just tear a piece apart and put your butter or jam or cheese. In the morning, you could also make pizza on it. These rich, flavorful selections becoming so popular, customers of all ethnicities began lining up. After a couple of years, we started seeing some non-Persian customers that were so surprised that they were starting to give, they started to give us compliments about our breads. And with that, Good afternoon, Saman Bakery. How can I help you? Saman Bakery took off. Good afternoon, Saman Bakery. How can I help you? Excited by this newly discovered market, the company quickly added macaroons and crackers to its menu, at the same time moving to a much larger space here in North Vancouver to keep up with demand in 2010. While still traditionally inspired, the bakery's treats have been altered throughout the years to cater to West Coast eaters. We practiced to achieve this recipe for a long time. We wanted to make them gluten-free. We always wanted to keep all of our products natural. Tweaking its oven roasted crackers at the same time. Back home, these crackers are made in a few different ways. I know they, they make them with uh, sunflower seeds, as well as a few varieties of berries that are popular in Iran. Here, we don't have the berries exactly the way they're made in Iran. This one specifically is the almond crackers that has a lot of uh, fresh slices of almond on it. This year, we have also made uh, another variety um, that has um, flax seeds and another one that has sesame seeds. With the company today shipping to over 100 grocery and private stores throughout BC, Victoria and Alberta, Amin and his team also taking new orders every month, it's a surprise that continues to motivate him. I see a lot of non-Persian friends and companies that are actually working with Persian traditional food and ingredients supermarkets that are actually have their own section of Persian food and spices and uh, I'm impressed to see that. With plans to introduce even more innovative products in the next few years, there's no doubt this bakery's goods will continue to redefine Persian cuisine, with each treat paying a subtle tribute to back home. I would like to promote and introduce Persian food as much as we can. I'm very proud of what we have achieved so far and I think I, I see a very successful and great future for us. If you'd like to view all of Saman Bakery's goods, you can visit the link at the bottom of the screen there. You won't regret it, believe me. All right, Dora, I think we've gone over everything there is to the program, hopefully. Um, but we should mention, we forgot to mention earlier in the show, this is just for people who have curbside pickup, correct? Mm -hmm. So just that people in apartments or who don't have access or have that service, curbside pickup, what do they do if they want to also um, give their products? Mm -hmm. So some apartments have commercial collection that provides organic collection. And if they don't yet, they can talk to their strata councils and they might be able to get organic collection in their apartment. Um, and if that doesn't happen or if they just want to do something before that happens, they can take the organics down to Carney's and they have a bin there for your organics. Perfect. And as part of that also, these brochures would have come with your Kitchen Catcher early May, but if you want to get another copy of them, uh, people can also pick these up at uh, Carnies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what exactly does this entail? Uh, the brochure goes over pretty much everything you need to know about the program, um, how it works, uh, what goes in, uh, some of the frequently asked questions about um, how to deal with some of the problems that happen in uh, the program. Mm -hmm. Okay, well hopefully we've smoothed over quite a few today. Mm -hmm. And the main thing that we were saying is uh, keep your bins locked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's one really important message. Uh, <laughs> we want to keep the bears out, so when it's not collection day, locked with both locks. All right, there's one thing you take away. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, thank you so much, Dora, for joining Thanks. me. Thanks. All right, that is our show for today. If you have any questions as well about the uh, organic collection program, you can also reach out to us on Twitter and Facebook at Go See the Sky. And you can also view all of our green stories we've done here in town. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Whistler Shaw. Until next time, I'm your host, Vanessa Ibera.